हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम बैक टू माय चैनल आई होप यू आर डूइंग वेल आई प्रे फॉर यू ऑल गॉड गिव यू अ लॉन्ग लाइफ एंड यू लिव ऑलवेज हैप्पीली देयर प्लीज लाइक एंड शेयर दिस वीडियो एंड आल्सो सब्सक्राइब माय यूट्यूब चैनल आई हैव अ रिक्वेस्ट टू यू ऑल वॉच दिस वीडियो टिल एंड फॉर स्पोर्टिंग मी सो लेट स्टार्ट आउट इन्फॉर्मेशन दीज आर सम अपडेट्स ऑन दिन आर बिफोर स्टार्टिंग द वीडियो आई हैव टू टेल यू समथिंग Go to google.com and search janaropinions.com and open this site. Here you can see the latest news, Dinar opinions, and Dinar guru updates on a single page. So visit this site for more information. The bad guys in Iraq, whoever they may be, they just don't want the monetary reform. They don't want it to happen. You know that. That's the reason why we don't have the monetary reform of the Iraqi dinar because of the corruption that is occurring inside of the, the government of Iraq. But Sadani is in good control, he sure is. Article: Parliamentary Committee expects oil and gas law to be approved soon, delayed because it is a political pressure card. Quote: The Parliamentary Oil and Gas Committee expressed its optimism on Sunday about the imminent approval of the oil and gas law. Have you ever wondered how the oil wealth of a region can cause tensions between different governments? Welcome to today's video, where we're diving into a topic been a point of contention in Iraq for nearly 19 years. We're talking about the hydrocarbon law, or HCL, and its impact on the Kurdish region of Iraq. Understanding HCL is crucial, especially considering how vital oil revenues are to Iraq's economy and the livelihoods of its people. So, What exactly is this law and how does it shape the financial landscape of the Kurdish region? Let's break it down together. First, let's start with some background on Iraq's oil industry. Iraq has some of the largest oil reserves in the world, making it a key player on the global stage. This wealth from oil is vital for the Iraqi government's budget and revenues. The hydrocarbon law was introduced to regulate the management of these oil resources and ensure fair distribution. But wait, why has this been such a difficult issue? For starters, the HCL was designed to create a framework for sharing oil profits among the federal government and the semi-autonomous Kurdish region. The challenge lies in the fact that both parties have different views on how this should be done. Let's take a closer look at how the payments work under this law. When oil is extracted from the Kurdish region, the profits are supposed to be shared between the Kurdish government and the federal government in Baghdad. However, this sharing agreement has often resulted in disputes. For instance, the Kurdish regional government (KRG) argues that it should control its resources and take a larger share of the profits. On the other hand, The federal government wants to maintain control over oil revenues for the sake of national interests. This conflict of interest leads to a lack of trust between the two parties. Now, let's discuss the flow of payments. When oil is sold, the revenue generated typically goes into a shared account. But due to disagreements, this payment flow has often been disrupted. For example, There have been instances where the federal government has withheld payments to the KRG, leading to financial crises in the Kurdish region. These situations not only strain relations but also impact the lives of everyday people who depend on these resources. To understand the human side of this issue, let's consider some real-life impacts. Many workers in the oil sector depend on timely payments for their jobs and livelihoods. When payments are delayed, It affects not just the workers, but also families and local businesses that rely on them. In these instances, the conflict regarding the HCL has direct consequences on people's lives. But it's not just about money; it's also about autonomy and self-governance. The Kurdish region has its own government and wants more control over its resources. This desire fuels the push for a more favorable interpretation of the HCL. Another crucial element to note is international interest in Iraqi oil. Countries and companies are looking to invest in oil fields, putting pressure on both the Kurdish and federal governments. This dynamic can complicate the situation further, 
making it harder for an agreement to be reached. So, what has been done to address the issues surrounding the HCL? Attempts have been made to revise and come to a new understanding of the law. But each negotiation seems to end in a stalemate. As this ongoing dispute continues, it raises questions about the future of oil management and revenue distribution in Iraq. What happens if a resolution isn't reached? Could it lead to increased tensions or even violence? These are uncertainties that both the Kurdish region and the federal government must navigate carefully. Ultimately, the HEL represents more than just a law, it symbolizes the struggle for control, power, and economic stability in Iraq. Before we wrap up, I'd love to hear your thoughts. How do you think the hydrocarbon law should be handled? Do you believe the Kurdish region deserves more autonomy over its resources, or should the federal government have the final say? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. As we have seen, the hydrocarbon law is not just about numbers and profits, it's a complex issue affecting millions of lives. The struggle for oil revenue distribution highlights fundamental disagreements on governance and rights within Iraq. If you found this video insightful, please give it a thumbs up, share it with friends, and subscribe for more content delving into the complexities of geopolitics. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.